Today's video is going to be on Rhino Records. I had done a recent video on uh, the group Love, and I pulled out one of their albums, the best ofs, and it was a Rhino record release. And I think I made a comment of how many Rhino Records I have in my collection. So somebody asked, well, let's see them. Let's have a look at those. And I, this is a lot that I've got here, quite a stack of albums and CDs. And if it wasn't for Rhino, I don't really know where I would have been in my record collecting teenage years. And I just thought I'd give you a quick rundown of some of my records in my Rhino collection. And this is pretty much all of them. And I'm not gonna do it chronologically of release date or alphabetically by band name. I'm going to do it autobiographically as how I came upon them. So I'm just gonna dive right in here. Rhino Records really got started in the late 70s, I think. And most of these that I'm gonna show you are from the 80s. And they also specialize in picture discs, not just retrospectives of 60s bands. Now, the, the Yardbirds here, this is a picture disc. And this was 1982, this came out. I got it a couple years after that. And one of the things I was really enamored with was the Jeff Beck, Jimmy Page lineup. And the three songs that were recorded together with those two guys in the lineup, those songs were very hard to come by back then. And obviously no internet, uh, there wasn't a lot of, there weren't books and magazines really easy to get at to find out information on the bands. And um, so I, this is an interview disc. So this is one of my very early forays into research. And this interview uh, is with uh, Jim McCarty, the drummer, and Chris Drea, the rhythm guitarist. So it's, it's pretty good. And um, the other side is just a black and white of this Paul Samuel Smith, Jeff Beck era Yardbird. So that was one of my early ones. I only have a couple picture discs here. And typically I'd only get a picture disc if there was something kind of music on it that I couldn't get anywhere else. This was the exception. And as I've said in other videos, the 80s was a great time to be a record collector if you were a 60s fan. And like we saw in the 70s, there was this 50s revival. And then the 90s was really a 70s revival. Well, in the 80s, we had a 60s revival. And just by the sheer amount of releases, you can see how big of a revival it was. One of the early bands I dove into just to get into the 60s bands as much as I could were the Standells. Now they had, this was two different releases. This first one was a best of, and they had one big hit, Dirty Water. And they were a Los Angeles band. I figured, well, I can get into some of that folk rock psychedelic stuff. And sure enough, they do have some of that. And then Rhino also put out a Rarities album, which had some B-side and some more obscure album cuts. And they always have some very nice liner notes on the back, so you do get a little bit of a band history. So this is kind of where some of my research really started was with Rhino releases. I remember going to the malls and there was a couple chain record stores in the malls. One was Music Land where I live and the other was JR's. And at that time you had, I guess the rock or the pop music section where you had all the bands of the day, plus like the bigger older bands like the Beatles and the Stones. But then at the very end, you had a section called Oldies. So I'd go to that, and that's where these, some of these 80s comps started to get put. And one of them that I picked up was this, the Naz, the best of the Naz. I had never heard of the Naz. Now I started reading the liner notes in the back. I'm like, okay, Todd Rundgren, I know, knew who he was. This was his first band. So I thought, and Rhino released all three of their original albums, and then they made this compilation. I said, well... Let me try this compilation, maybe I won't like them. So I bought this, took it home, really liked it, and then that led me to buy <laughs> all three of the albums. Naz, 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 and Naz 3. And, um, oops, this one we don't need yet. And what was interesting is Rhino went to the expense. This is their classic album, Naz, Naz, and it originally was released on red vinyl. And Rhino did the same with this release, which I thought was pretty cool. Their attention to detail was very good. And one of the things that these records, Rhino, these were not premium priced albums. These, I think these albums were retailing around $7.98, maybe $8.46 or whatever, you know, that eight, nine dollar range. And at the time, CDs were in the $15 range, maybe a little bit more. So this was still a pretty good value, I thought. 
so the Naz, so I bought all three of the Naz albums and uh, liked all three of those. There's good stuff on all of them. Around the same time, this was one of the best buys I've ever made. The Left Bank, the history of the Left Bank. Now, the Left Bank, I knew Pretty Bell, or not, um, Walk Away Renee, obviously the big hit. And as I'm reading the liner notes, well, actually, there weren't any liner notes in here. There's very good liner notes on the inside, as I recall. It's been a while here. Yeah, there was this. So there was a complete discography, plus liner notes that had interviews of band members. So that was right up my alley. But the reason this was called The History of the Left Bank was because it had some songs on here uh, by Michael Brown, who, after the Left Bank, did, um, he was in the band Stories with Brother Louie, which was the number one song. That song is on here. There was a couple of rare songs. Steve Martin did a single in 1970, I believe. Those are on here as well. But a couple of minor hits, and this was a great way for me to get into this band. They only had two albums, and I was able to locate both of them and what great albums they both are. So this was one of the great finds, and I had I have Ryan O to thank for it. Should have taken these out of these slips before. Now the other one that I said was one of the best albums I've ever bought, The Merry-Go-Round, also on Rhino, also around, about the same time. Now this is one of the bands I had never heard of these guys. I'd never heard of Emmett Rhodes, and I didn't know any of their songs. But on the back, very great detailed uh, history of the band. And it breaks down the songs that are on here. And uh, the, the Bangles had just covered their song called Live. And I hadn't even caught wind of that. But just reading the notes, I'm like, okay, this, they, they are supposed to kind of be Beatle-like, Magical Mystery Tour, Tour era. That's right in my wheelhouse. So this was one of my, my most wonderful buys and a band I'd never heard of. And I took a chance on it and I came up a winner. The Box Tops. This was a group that, you know, I knew of three of their hits, um, The Letter, Cry Like a Baby, and Soul Deep. And um, this was a band that's right in the wheelhouse for me. And when I got this, you know, I was a little underwhelmed with it. This is a another early Rhino Comp, 1982. And I didn't get this right away. And this one didn't really speak to me, me as, as much as the other three bands I just showed you did. But it was still great to have this because I do like some of their songs and I'm a sucker for a band history. As the 80s wore on, one of the great releases that, uh, was this by The Birds. So The Birds, all their albums had still been in print. So there was some releasing of unreleased material on an independent label. And then Rhino got these early tracks, which... Uh, some of these I had on an album called Pre-Flight, but these were different uh, takes. And so this was just another great find. And again, these were not very expensive. Now, Rhino also around this time, this was, might have been about 88, they were releasing CD versions, and sometimes those CD versions had some extra tracks on it. So that, sometimes I'd buy the album, and then a couple years later, the CD comes out with extra tracks. I'd buy the CD as well, which I didn't really like doing, but I wanted those tracks. Next we have the Chocolate Watch Band. So this, this uh, design is a little bit, uh, it's not very fancy, and they just have black and white photos to deal with, but again, they have a great compilation. You get a great idea of who this band was and some history of the band. And Rhino was always very good. The quality of the recordings I always thought was pretty good, although I was never an audiophile, so I wasn't paying attention to that as closely then, but I always thought it was pretty good. So this was also another good one. This is what year, 83. So you can see that Rhino's doing a good mix of like garage, pop, harder rock, you know, whatever they could. Mercy Beat, so we got The Searchers. And The Searchers at that time, I don't think any of their music was in print. This was probably the only thing in print at the time and uh, without getting something that was maybe an import. Of course, I would be delving through all the old record bins to find old stuff. And it took me a while to get some Searchers album, but, albums, but this was my start. And this covers their hits from 63 to 66. So that was their hit making period. 
and some nice information on the back. The turtles, let me just dive deep here. The turtles, now I'm trying to figure out, I'm not sure what the first Rhino release was, but this turtles release, this picture just was 1978. And the reason I bought it, it's got four songs on here that I didn't know where to find them. Uh, the Owl, To See the Sun, Surfer Dan, and the last thing I remember, the first thing I knew. So that's why I bought this, because I, as I said, I'm usually not into picture sleeves. I think the other side has got a little bit of a nicer photograph. Yeah, it's Color on the Beach. I thought that was kind of a cool picture. But this I bought because of the music on it uh, and no other reason. In fact, I always thought it was a little bit awkward to deal with picture discs and put them on the platter and stuff. And people always complain that they don't have the best song quality, but I never noticed too much on that. But the Turtles were given a very nice treatment by Rhino. What do I start with here? This was a very early one I bought two greatest hits. So this had 14 songs on it. This came out also in 1982. So they had a big, just a big release of uh, great albums at that time. And I didn't, I knew several of their hits. And I think my buddy might have had a single or two growing up, but um, this had them all in one place and all the biggies. And I think it did so well that they came out with a second, uh, like a volume two. This came out six years later, which had some more, a couple B-sides, some more obscure singles and maybe some album tracks. It also included the final album that never got released. Some of those tracks are on here as well. And as you can see, Rhino was show, showing off all the releases that they had made here on the back. And one of those releases was this one, Shell Shock, which was a their unreleased album from 1970. So it was kind of a an album that never was, which is some great stuff, by the way. Okay, uh, the the Turtles were given great treatment. All of their albums got re-released on Rhino. Some of them in different jackets and some variations on the covers, not exactly sure why. But then Rhino's attention turned to the monkeys. And they started on the monkeys fairly early. This is another 1982 picture disc. So there was a, a Greatest Hits Monkeys album from the mid 70s. And there, there was a, I think that was on Arista. And then there was a volume two on Arista. And these two comps, were kind of volume three and volume four. That's how I viewed them anyway. Yeah, it says volume four here. And this does not say volume three. But there are, four, six, there are 12 songs on this. And this was the first time I ever heard the Porpoise song. One of my favorite psychedelic songs of all time. And some obscure stuff, some unreleased stuff, stuff that weren't on albums. So this was my, the third Monkey album that I bought is that right? I bought new. So I had Greatest Hits Volume 1, 2, and then I bought this one and this one. And this is just album, you know, deeper cuts, album tracks. Songs like Daily Nightly, Oh My My, Good Clean Fun, Teardrop City, You Told Me. So these were uh, really great additions. And this is when I started getting into the monkeys. And this is right around when MTV started airing the show. And this is right around the time of their 20th anniversary. So that would have been 1986. So Rhino re-released all of their albums. And um, there was just Monkey Mania. And I, I saw that. They, they were selling big venues, as a matter of fact. So I was very happy to see them on, the, on that reunion tour, which also included Gary Puckett and Union Gap, Herman's Hermits, and The Grassroots. This is another Rhino. This is what I really loved. Uh, so Rhino started to pay attention to the unreleased catalog of the Monkees. There was a, quite a lot of material. This Missing Links album was released in 1987. This has 12 tracks on it. Now, I, I didn't bring... Yeah, I did. There's a CD version with more tracks. How many tracks we got on here? 16 tracks. So I had to buy this one a second time. And I'm glad I did because the couple tracks that were on here... I really liked. So Missing Links became a series that they did and they did a couple more albums, a couple more CDs of this, but they were not originally released on album. Now as Rhino began to expand their operations, they did so with box sets with the Monkees. So this was a four disc box set that covered the history of the band. Oops, I got it upside down here. 
and uh, some unreleased stuff. And I remember buying this. I remember exactly where I was when I bought this and sitting in the car opening it up uh, to check it out. And this was the first time I really, th this was, um, they, this particular booklet listed the instrumentation on here and the session players who played on. So you knew which songs the monkeys played on, what instruments they were playing, and the guest stars. And some very interesting guest stars were on here, Stephen Stills, Neil Young, uh, two that are off the top of my head. But this was a really nice set for me. And, and this stuff was not too impressive. But again, Rhino was not into, they were give, giving you a lot of value for the buck, always. And that's one thing I always appreciated. I can't remember how much this set cost, but I was kind of a completist with the monkeys' music at the time. Not really collecting albums, but I was just looking for the songs that they hadn't released. And uh, that had a couple more that the Missing Links did not have. And then Rhino began, as long as I'm on the monkeys, they're handmade. They, they had a, like a, a, a separate label that was more of a collector's label. Rhino Handmade, which was smaller quantities. So that was a, a much higher in product and they would only do a certain amount. So they started doing these expansive box sets for the monkeys, uh, multi-discs for say the monkeys headquarters and things like that. And I think they did that for a couple other artists as well. I never really got, I was never into the monkeys that much, but it just showed their dedication to some of these artists. Now here's another one you might not think that uh, would get a compilation, but it's the Trogs. And they had two big hits here in the States. Uh, Wild Thing, of course, number one song, and Love Is All Around. They had more hits in England, but not a very, this band was, you know, kind of garagey, not very sophisticated, but they had some interesting songs. And this was my, I think the first thing I bought by them. And again, it was just a great opportunity to hear a band like this in some, not only the hits that they had, but some of their, a uh, couple deeper cuts as well. So this is what got me into the Trogs. Now here's a group that uh, nobody talks about much, and that's the Vogues. So they had the, the big hit Five O'Clock World, You Are The One, Turn Around, Look At Me. So this is a very nice comp that spans roughly, I guess, 1965 to about 1969, I think. And they were not one of, they were one of those more AM radio bands that never were a cool band. In fact, maybe their hair wasn't shaggy like the Beatles at, at first. It took maybe a couple years to do that. But they have a surprisingly interesting catalog. And by the late 60s, they were much more like adult contemporary stuff. But uh, this was a great comp. And we have 14 tracks on here. So again, lots of tracks on the album. All right, we got the best of Spanky and our gang. Spanky and Our Gang had only four albums, I believe, and then a Greatest Hits. So that Greatest Hits album, I think, had been out of print, but it, you could still find it. Uh, Spanky and Our Gang seemed to sell enough albums. I could always seem to find them in uh, the used record store bins and stuff. But this one was great to get because you had everything in one place, and there are a lot of tracks on here, and a nice history so you kind of know who was in the band and a little bit of the group's background. Now, Rhino was really, had their finger on the pulse of what was going on, I think, with bands so much so that they, with the Rascals, the Rascals had four albums and then they came up with the Greatest Hits album in 1968, which is kind of, I guess it's considered a, a, a quintessential part of their catalog. After that album, like many Greatest Hits albums that come out, those other albums that came after that didn't do as well. So this is a compilation of the Greatest Hits or the best tracks from 69 to 72. So it's Greatest Hits Volume 2. So this is how I, I got into some of the Rascals later stuff. I dipped my toe in with this compilation. And as you can see, very extensive notes on the back, the artwork of the, those albums. And uh, that was a great introduction to the later period work. The best of The Outsiders. This was, you know, I, by this time, anything I could buy, any retrospective, I was really, would start there first because then if I was going to dive into their catalog, if I found this to be good enough, then I could spend the time and the money to search out 
the record bins and if I found an original that might be 15 bucks or something, maybe I spend the money on it. The Outsiders were a group, their big hit was Time Won't Let Me. They had a few other minor hits, Help Me Girl is one. But they were very much more uh, kind of a pop band, AM radio type of uh, band. And I think they might have broken up by about 68. So this actually, and like a lot of these bands that start in, say, 64, 65 during the Beatlemania, British Invasion, these bands had to weather the folk rock period, then the psychedelic period, and then what came after. So a lot of these bands go through those changes too. Sometimes they do it gracefully, sometimes not so gracefully. But there's always a, a track or two that I find that's worthwhile. And the Outsiders did have a couple of those. Here's a band I just covered recently on a two-part series, Love. This, somebody told me, was their very first, Rhino's first compilation. This is dated 1980. All these comps, I can't find one that's earlier than this, at least for 60s bands. Uh, that picture disc by the Turtles being the exception. But a best of love, I mean, I can't imagine how you would, you'd have to find their records in a used record store if you were to find anything on them at all. I don't think they had anything available in print by 1980. Really, out of the 60s, I think. Forever Changes, I don't think stayed in print. Maybe it had a second run. I don't know. But... Um, that's why these were so valuable. And this, this album had 16 tracks on it. So they really jammed a lot of, a lot of song, a lot of music on there. Okay, so he, I must be a 60s fan to spend $8.99 on a Gary Lewis and the Playboy's Greatest Hits. Now, I, I knew his hits. I knew a few of his hits, not all of them. And I, I liked his, his hits, but I wasn't expecting much. But it's interesting when you delve into bands like this, and they had a lot of albums, how uh, you, you find some nuggets in there. And one of the things, as I recall, uh, Gary Lewis, Jerry Lewis's son, for those of you who don't know, he ended up getting drafted and went into the service. And I think it was late 67 that he went into the service, maybe early 68. So before he went in, they recorded extra material so they could release albums while he was overseas. And one of those was Sealed With A Kiss, which was a hit for him in 69. And that was a hit by, who had the hit in 63? Ah, oh, his name escapes me. Anyway, you're, you're shouting at your screen right now. Um, it's just kind of interesting how uh, some of the songs they had to kind of guess what might be good radio hits. You know, and that was, Seal with a Kiss was one of them. I think that was a top 20 hit for them. So, will I do a band history on Gary Lewis and the Playboys? Maybe I will. Okay, let's go through some of the CDs here before I go back to the albums. Getting back to the Yardbirds. Uh, I was, it was hard to find quality compilations. There was a lot of compilations of the Yardbirds. And I found this Rhino one, which had 18 tracks, to be somewhat of a definitive one. It only went up to 1966. Did not have the Page and Beck stuff on here. And uh, that I was still finding. But this was a good place to start for me at the time. And then this, the very first album, uh, was great to get it on Rhino. I didn't think, you wouldn't think that they would release this, but they did. And I think the speed was corrected on this. The original pressing, I think they sped it up to fit it on the album or something. There was a mistake, I don't remember. But they took the time and effort to make that the correct speed. Here are those, uh, whoa, no, no. Yeah, here we go. Here are the Monkey's Missing Link CDs I mentioned earlier. So this is the one I had to rebuy because they had more tracks on it. Then volumes two and three look like this. So by this time, they had given up on the vinyl format and just released these on CD. I think, why? Because this has got 24 tracks, this has got 19 tracks, so you might as well fit them all on the CD and um, be done with it. So these were great for me to get. These were like such a great addition to the Monkees catalog. I was a big Monkees fan, had all their albums. And yes, I will be doing a Monkees video at some point soon. I just got to psych myself up for it. That would, that'll be a big one. And these tracks, uh, I think, are, are going to figure into that discussion because it's interesting. The, 
the wealth of time and st the studio time the monkeys had no other band in the world really had what the monkeys had which was unlimited time in the studio to record anything they wanted and they didn't tour a lot so they did tour but they had all these session players at their beck and call so they had not only a great deal of albums that they released legitimately during between late 66 and 1970 but a ton of music that never got released and most of that is on these compilations which is great to have I need a sip. Tommy James and the Shondells. I bought this, uh, I actually, I didn't grab the vinyl. I've got the vinyl, uh, Crimson and Clover. I don't even know if that's Rhino or not. Anyway, Rhino released the album Crimson and Clover and Cellophane Symphony together on this CD. Both of those albums came out in 69. Actually, Crimson and Clover made them in December 68, but they were recorded at the same time. Cellophane Symphony is the much more experimental album. So to get those on CD, I was always looking to upgrade my vinyl. So I had both of those on vinyl, and the Crimson and Clover is one I bought in the oldies bin. That was a new release, and but Cellophane Symphony, I bought that, that had not been uh, re-released on vinyl. So I had a vinyl copy of that, and wanting to upgrade that and digitize it, I bought this compilation. So that was very cool. Birds. I had mentioned the birds uh, in the beginning. You saw the vinyl that I had earlier. This is the CD that I picked up with a few more tracks on it. This came out a couple years later, I think. They got me again. Here's a group I was extremely happy to find a compilation on. The New Colony Six. For those of you who are AM radio fans, this is a Chicago area band. They started out more garagey and kind of morphed into more of an easy listening band. They had four albums and singles going up through about 1971 or so. In this compilation, 20 tracks, this has all their singles on it up through like early 71, right about. So this is, I'm just happening to be looking here, there are CD bonus tracks on here. So apparently this was released on vinyl, and I'm, I'm, I don't think I ever saw it, but by that time I was probably just going for the CD. Whatever gave me the, the tracks that are hard to get, and some of these bonus tracks, at least this one here that I'm seeing, uh, the last one is a late single that would have never been on an album. So there you have the New Colony 6. Yes, I will be doing a video on them. I really like that group. Okay, another group I love. Love, love, love the association. Rhino got the rights in conjunction with Warner Brothers to put this compilation out in, this came out in 2002. So this is a little later. And um, there were two versions of this. There's a, a British version as well, with some different tracks. But there are 51 tracks on this compilation. And of course, it comes with a very nice booklet. And the graphics are mimicking the old Warner Brothers. So this was in conjunction with Warner Brothers, but Rhino's logo is on it. They maybe did the distribution. I don't know, or I don't know. Anyway, if you're looking for uh, an expansive asso association set, this would be the one to get. And as I, I was buying anything they came out with pretty much, this is uh, The Shadows of Night, another Chicago band. Uh, again, a garagey band. These guys stayed garagey. And uh, some of their stuff is actually pretty heavy sounding for being a, a Chicago kind of uh, pre-66 band. And some very good stuff. They do a cover of I Am The Hunter. Uh, they do a great song, Shake. That's one of their great uh, energetic songs from the late period. And of course they did, uh, they had the hit with the song Gloria in the States. The group of them had a hit, a minor hit with it here, but they had the bigger hit. What else we got? Otis Redding. So Otis, uh, this came out, again, this is some of the stuff that I don't believe was on vinyl. If it was, vinyl was falling out of favor. Uh, vinyl was not getting pressed anymore by the late 80s, early 90s. They were making the switch over to CD, which was fine by me because I had stopped playing a lot of albums. I was playing more uh, CDs and by 2002, I was importing it all into my computer anyway. So this was my first foray, foray into any uh, uh, Otis Redding stuff because I didn't even have an album by Otis. Another good one here, San Francisco Band, although they're not thought of as a, of a San Francisco band, as a San Francisco band, it's the Bo Brummels. 
they were often confused as a British Invasion band. But they were really, perhaps, the first folk rock band, really beating the birds to the punch with the hit Laugh Laugh. And Just a Little was the follow-up hit, which was almost as big of a hit. So these guys had uh, albums up through 1968. And... If any band weathered the storm through the folk rock and psychedelic period, this was one of the bands and still kept the original sound, wrote the original material, had a great guitar player in Ron Elliott. And uh, this is a great compilation, 18 tracks. And I'm going to end the CDs here. Here's Booker T and the MGs. So Booker T was a group, I don't know, I just decided I, I need to get into them. I knew of a lot of their work or the the bands that they backed up, like Otis Redding, um, the Marquis, I think, who else? Uh, all those Dax and Volt uh, performers. And I just wanted to get their main, their main hits. And they had quite a lot of hits, Green Onions being one of their biggest hit. Um, they did uh, Chinese Checkers, Hip Hugger, um, Time is Tight, Hang Em High. So they had quite a few hits. And this was my entry point to Booker T and the MGs and I started to buy a couple more of their CDs and then I started to buy their albums. Now one of the things that Rhino did was probably the best thing they ever did was the compilations they did of just, I'm gonna start, I got these out of order here. So they would do these compilations of early San Francisco. So you get a stash of 14 tracks uh, like the Charlatans, the Mojo Men, the Bull Brummels, the Vegetables, uh, the Great Society, all found on one compilation. So this was such a great history lesson for me. You know, you got photos. They're not the best photos, but they got a photo of every every band and a little, uh, not a very, not a lot of liner notes, but just enough to whet your appetite. And with always very good writers too. This is Gene Shulati, who did the the notes for that. Let me put these aside for a moment. This, I think, was, this is volume one. This may have been the first one. And like the Nuggets compilation from the early 70s by Lenny Kay, this was more the garage band stuff. Electric Prunes, Human Beings, Standells, Five Americans, The Leaves, The Barbarians, The Seeds, uh, The Naz, Amboy Dukes, Blue Cheer. And this has a longer uh, uh, history on each band. So all this stuff was just great for me, anybody who was looking to get into the 60s. So if you're a younger uh, viewer out there, these you can still pick up, and these did get released on CD as well eventually. Volume three is Pop, who we got here. <clears throat> the Knickerbockers, The Crying Shames, Voice and Heart, Merry Go Round, Bobby Fuller Four, Turtles, Outsiders, People, October Country. So they got pretty obscure on some of these. <clears throat> Let's see what else we got here. This is another pop volume. Uh, we've got The Vogues, The Knickerbockers, Hackamore Brick, Love and Spoonful, The Association, The Mojo Men, American Breed, Cherokee, Strawberry Alarm Clock. So, good stuff. Volume four, more pop. This is a little more obscure. We've got Teddy and the Pandas, The Parade, The E-Types, The Palace Guard, The Chart Busters. The Long Island Sound, we've got Yellow Balloon, Merry-Go-Round, Outsiders, The Royal Guardsmen. So you can see the great variety they could give you. And again, this was pretty affordable. Then, after a while, you notice this design got updated to this design. And uh, I don't know if this coincided with the CD releases, but they were releasing more and just, I don't know, updated the look. So this is the Northwest. So you have groups like the Kingsmen, the Sonics, the Whalers, Paul Revere and the Raiders, um, the Initial Shock, the Daily Flash, the Weeds. So again, uh, easy to get at the time. I don't really know how easy these are to get now. I'm sure there's plenty of them around. But again, uh, if you were looking to have vinyl, get a lot for the money. Obviously, you can download all this. This is all on YouTube now. Just click of a button. But in the old days, you had to actually shell out some cash and wear out some shoe leather to find them. This is Folk Rock. Oh, this is a great one. I love this one. So we got The Birds, The Turtles, Grassroots, Deep Six, Jake Holmes. So Jake Holmes, Dazed and Confused is on here, the original version. So I heard that first here. Scott McKenzie, Barry McGuire, Modern Folk Quartet, Nitty Gritty Dirt Band, Peanut Butter Conspiracy, Love Exchange, Heart and Flowers. Great. And then we got Acid Rock. This is the psychedelic stuff. 
iron butterfly, the seed, strawberry alarm clock, love, birds. Uh, they even got Kenny Rogers in the first edition on here, Steppenwolf, Young Rascals, The Monkees, West Coast Pop Art Experimental Band. So you can see the dedication Rhino uh, made. I don't know what they've been doing lately when they started doing all this Rhino handmade stuff and all the uh, fancier box sets that I ended up not buying. I had so much of this already and I just, I guess, moved on to other things. But you can see where my start, uh, my history lessons came from. A great deal of it came from Rhino Records. So um, that is my overview of Rhino Records. This is kind of a little bit of a preview of some of the bands I would like to do in the future. I know you guys are doing, making a lot of requests. I, I'm working on a few right now and uh, I almost have too much to work on. I don't know which one to do first. So I, I will be bringing out plenty more. So uh, keep your requests coming in. And typically if one band is getting just a lot of requests, and I'm talking about requests over the last couple of years that I've been doing this, this channel, I always take that into account. And that's where my, my Patreons really help me out as well. So if you wanted to contribute to this channel in a bigger way, that option is listed below. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.